Hello, welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church. This is Holy Tuesday when we celebrate our Holy Week services with our community here at Ripley Presbyterian Church. As you know, we are doing things a little differently this year. We are sharing our Holy Week services virtually. But fortunately, I have friends in high places. My dear friend, Bob Rambo, the Reverend Dr. Bob Rambo, brought our sermon yesterday while he was situated in Jackson, Mississippi a few days ago and shared his recording. Then tomorrow, we will be followed by another dear friend of mine, the Reverend Dr. Jim Futrell, who sent a recording of his sermon virtually, and he's even preached a Good Friday service that we're going to show on Wednesday. Now, it's a preface, and we can go back and watch it again on Wednesday, and for many of us, you may want to delay your viewing until that time. But these are some of the advantages, even in the midst of the challenges that we faced of COVID-19. This time that many of us have said we've reimagined what it means to be the church and how to be the church. One thing that I've heard numerous people say is that it's been a reminder to us this time of virtual worship that the church is not a specific place. And I certainly believe that and we have many of us uh, worshiped in ways that we haven't before. And some who haven't darkened the doors of churches for years have enjoyed community worship by watching virtually. You know, I saw just recently, though, an article yesterday in the Washington Post that stated, the headlines of the article, I'll paraphrase now, said that for the first time in over a century, the church has dipped below 50% in membership in our nation. It went on to say and explain that statement that those who are members of synagogues, mosques, or churches, less than half of our nation now today says that they are members of those type of faith communities. So as we consider the challenges of COVID-19, of transitioning back into a world where doors are open, vaccines have been performed, and we are once again reimagining what the church is going to be like in the post-COVID world, I want us to consider today those two statements that I said earlier. Firstly, this, that the church is not a specific place, but if we are to thrive in a post-COVID world, friends, we also must remember that the church is not a specific people. How can we open our doors and not only say you're welcome and y'all come, but go forth as the light of Christ to inspire people to be part of the Christian faith community? Well, to do that, as we always do, let's turn to Scripture and reflect for a few moments on today's devotion on this Holy Tuesday in the life of our church. Now to do so, I mentioned to you, I'm going back to the virtual talk again about how we're going to share uh, Jim Future Sermon tomorrow, even though it's a Good Friday message. We're changing the time around a bit, right? Well, to do that today, I'm going to change the time around a bit. Even though this is Holy Tuesday in the narrative life of Jesus that we commemorate, to begin that today, I want to fast forward about a year at least in the life of the Christian church, and I'm going to share for us first a reading in the book of Acts. So we're going to use our virtual time frame that allows us to move sermons around and share them at different times. We are going to examine the Christian church at a different time other than Holy Tuesday. Then we'll circle back around to Holy Tuesday at the end of the message. So bear with me now. I'm going to share a reading in just a moment from Acts chapter 8, if you'd like to follow along, beginning with verse 26, and we'll continue down through the remainder 
of that chapter. As we prepare to hear the word, let us pray together. Oh God, we are grateful for your word that gives life and guidance to us as your people. During the holiness of this season, as many of us in our traditions have embraced a time of fasting during Lent, a time to more intentionally focus on spiritual disciplines that remind us of your ultimate sacrifice of giving your very body and blood that all who trust in you may have life and life more abundantly through your grace. Will you, O oh God, now receive our worship as we reflect together as your church and seek to be molded more in your image through the hearing, receiving, and applying of your word. To the glory of Christ we pray. Amen. So from Acts chapter 8, I'm beginning with verse 26. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go forward to the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and he went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kandaki, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading from the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading from the prophet Isaiah. He said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so, does not, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip about whom it was uh, that you were asking does the prophet say this about? Or is it about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And they were going along the road. And they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water. And after Philip had baptized him, they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself as at Azotus. As he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. You know, as we hear that passage of Scripture, we share in this journey, this rejoicing, as the text tells us, with the Ethiopian eunuch who had found life in Christ as he petitioned Philip. He said, what is to prevent me to being baptized or in other words, maybe a deeper question of the Ethiopian eunuch is this. Philip, what is to prevent me from being a part of the church? Wrestling with our question that we began this devotion with today. Not only is the church, friends, not a certain place, but the church is also not a certain people. You see, What's earth-shaking in this text today, this exchange with Philip and the eunuch is an understanding about the traditions of the Jewish faith. As Jesus 
came ministering. And then his disciples after him, standing in the face of every message they preached, every journey they took, were these words of Scripture, like are recorded in Amos chapter 3, that says this to the people Israel, You alone are my people. You alone, Amos 3 said. As the Jewish heritage ran through the veins of those disciples, those followers of Jesus, they heard where scripture from times past said that they only were people of God. But also, there were texts like this in Deuteronomy chapter 23, where it says this about the eunuch, those who have a sexuality that is imperfect, those who, who were not a part of earthly families and had descendants to go after them. In Deuteronomy 23, it said the eunuch should not be part of the assembly of the faithful. So staring at Philip, as he is led by the Spirit to go to this person who is two things that the church said were unwelcoming. One, he was a foreigner. He was not part of the Jewish heritage, family, or faith. And number two, he was a eunuch. What gave Philip? What gave Philip the desire, the, the conviction, the bravery to go and minister to this one who the church or the people of faith for years had said, was not a part of the faith. You see, I think what inspired Philip's actions these days, as we're looking ahead some year or some time longer after Holy Week, was what happened on this Holy Tuesday, according to Scripture. In John chapter 12, a couple of weeks ago, for our sermon, we Listen to this text. And this text comes back to us again as the precise scribe scripture for our lectionary reading that was celebrated in the life of the church at the beginning of the church, even till now, of Holy Tuesday. Listen with me. These words from John chapter 12, where we began again from verse 20. It said, Now among those who went up to Worship at the festival were some Greeks. Okay, we hear it again. As we heard it in the Acts story, we have a complication once again. Someone in the Acts story was worshiping who was not of the Jewish faith and heritage, and they were foreigners. Here we have in our text today, what inspired Philip was the action that he was a part of that transpired on Holy Tuesday, where again we see foreigners, those who are Greeks, going to worship. Now let's look at this dilemma and see what the text tells us. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks, and here's what they did. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So Philip went and told Andrew, and together Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them this. Receive this with me, church. The hour has come. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will gain it and keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Friends, let's see the cross-section of these two stories. That 
Philip's ministry to the Ethiopian eunuch some year or longer later after he experienced this exchange with the Greeks and Jesus ministering to them as people of faith. You see, they were outside of the family. They were not part of the royal priesthood of the Jewish heritage. And yet, Jesus said at this cross section in our life to faith to Philip and the other disciples as the Greeks came seeking to have relationship with Jesus. This was Jesus' response. The time has come now. My hour is before us for the Son of Man to be glorified. You see, throughout John, we hear this journey, even beginning in John 2. Many of us remember where Jesus' mother, Mary, inspired him to turn the water into wine. And what did he say? What was his response? My hour has not come. Throughout this journey, we're building this narrative with John the Gospel writer where we're saying Jesus couldn't be arrested yet because his hour had not yet come. And here we finally find it at the climax of John where when the Greeks come seeking to be part of the church, those outsiders, those other people, it was then that Jesus said, my hour has come. It's time for me to be glorified. And friends, as we know the rest of the story, as we've read the gospel, we know that Jesus' glorification came through his death, his crucifixion, but then ultimately his resurrection and ascension into heaven. Would you receive with me the magnitude of, of Jesus' action in this text, though. That Jesus, our Lord, saw that the church, that faith, that life through him was for all creation, regardless of place, location. Any who trust in him as Lord and Savior could be and should be and would be part of the church. Forever. Friends, this Holy Tuesday invited you, O Greek, invited me, O Gentile, to be part of the family of God because Jesus Christ tasted death for you and me and all creation. We begin this message today by saying, for the church to thrive, for us to hear Jesus' call to tape up our cross and follow after him in this time after Easter, in this post-COVID time when the church needs to be renewed and be the light of Christ in the darkness of our world, stamping out hate, with love, the only thing that lasts forever, that may we never forget that the church is not a certain place, but the church also is not a certain people. If my Lord Jesus Christ believed that so much, he was willing to die for it, then I, for one, believe it enough that I'm willing to live for it, that he may be glorified now and forever. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Holy Week. Continue to grow in the grace of our Lord. Amen.